spawning up here in the top, playing for Rye Gaming. He is Zest. And his opponent down here in the bottom for the Afrika Freaks. He is DRG. Now, uh, the question is, is, is DRG going to be able to break Zest? Um, DRG already playing it very, very aggressive here. Just wants to get that second hatchery down. Uh, so when this probe comes in, uh, he's not going to get too far behind in that regard. But that does mean you do need to get your creep spread started. Otherwise, you are very vulnerable to any sort of early Protoss shenanigans. By very aggressive, I mean like a two-base, 30-drone uh, Ling All-In. There we go. Well, thank you, Miracle. I try my best to make sure that everybody is enjoying it. And I always bring you the best games that we can. Now, Zest going to be going for that Stargate style. Uh, we should be seeing probably about one Oracle, maybe a couple of Phoenix as well. Um, I'm sure that he would love to kill off some of these overlords, just deny the vision of uh, his opponent. Because in doing so, he's really going to have an edge when he does decide to move out and attack. But I don't think he's going to stick on this for too long. We might see that kind of Void Ray style, but... Uh, just recently, I've been seeing all those Void Rays get absolutely destroyed. Um, versus Zerg players, especially, once the Hydrosks come out. Uh, this is a replay, but I am actually here. I mean, I'm legally here. But there we go, DRNG does get a good scout off on this. He sees the Oracle moving across. Not gonna throw down any static D just yet. And I kind of agree with that. Uh, if you have enough Queens, you really don't need that much static D. A little bit early on the pop there for the Oracle. Gonna get a couple of drones before getting forced away by those Queens. Okay, some decent damage to start things off and actually behind this, that's going to be going for the Adept Glaive build. Now DRG has to be worried about this a little bit because from here you need to throw down either a Roach Warren or those Baneling Nests. Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to defend with pure Ling. And yeah, there we go. He throws down the Roach Warren to defend against this. He's got his creep spread between the bases as well, which is really all you need uh, to keep this from snowballing. Just got to make sure that the first pop of the shades is not going to be uh, great. Um... I do not know exactly when ESL does start today. Um, I think the Korea matches are over now. But here we go. DRG does get a good scout off of this. The links going across the map have given him all the information that he needs. But will he have enough roaches? So far, he's just deciding to block off the natural. 
And I think that's a good decision to start things off, but they will not hold. Just gonna get in there. And the Roaches have not popped yet. They are not in a high enough number to deal with this. I think DRG is in a little bit of trouble. Now kind of just jumping between uh, the bases, a little bit of a double prong here. 16 workers are dead and dying. And behind this, we do see Zest going to be transitioning into the Robo facility here. So now these roaches are on a bit of a timer before um, for being useful. Now he's trying to get the lair, but ah, that was just not the best decision there. And as I say that, he gets the lair. <laughs> So now DRG, one base, uh, one base down to his Protoss opponent, as well as completely techless. These Roaches are going to have to move across the map, and they are going to have to win this game now. But I just don't think that they are going to be able to do so, as there is plenty of Adepts at home, as well as an Immortal or two going to be finished up. And look at that, even a Void Ray. Oh, he doesn't even have enough to kill off the cannon quickly. So he is going to have to retreat with the roaches. Force field's going to kill off a couple more. And yeah, DRG recognizes the line in the sand there. GG is called Zest. We'll take game number one. Very convincing fashion there, I might add. I got to say... Um, I don't think that game was pre was very indicative of how DRG's been doing recently. I think Zess kind of just got the early advantage and was able to uh, kind of blindside him a bit. But we'll have to see if things will change up for this game because spawning down here in the top position he is Zest. And down here, in the bottom position of Pillars of Gold, he is DRG. So not too much craziness coming up in this game. I'd imagine uh, DRG kind of just going for that early third hatch, making sure that that does go down in time. And I think this is one of the maps where it's a little bit easier to defend that location just because it's a bit further away from your opponent. And um, as long as he gets that creep spread going pretty well, he should be a little bit safer versus... Um, a build like the previous game. I would like to see him be a bit more aggressive uh, versus Zest because the thing about Zest is once he's able to get into that like macro game, it's just very difficult to break him as a Zerg player. So you really have to get in there early and try and get that drone damage done. Now, once again, we see the Adept popping out. 
So I think we might be seeing Stargate come once again. And the reason for that is an Adept is a little... <sighs> I gotta stop making predictions. <laughs> but a lot of the time when you do see an Adept first, sometimes that does mean Stargate is going to be coming out because the Adept is a little bit less gas. So you're able to save up for the Stargate a little bit easier. But Zest actually playing it very safe with the first couple of Adepts. Uh, he's probably a little bit worried about the possibility of early aggression. But the question is, is it going to be Glaives once again? Uh, we do have that early Robo facility. So there is the potential for DTs, I'd imagine. But it really comes down to... Um, can he get these overlords out of his base before he decides? And it is indeed going to be Glaives once again. He did. Uh, he did not. The overlord never got. Uh, the, ne the overlord never got in the base. So DRG a little bit in the dark here about what's going on. Hasn't seen either of the buildings but he does see that there is an explosion of gateways here and he already has a roach warren on the way question is is he going to have enough this time because uh, with roaches you do need to kind of clump them up a little bit in order uh, to defend this and right now his creep isn't even connecting right now he, he's got to get that connected You know, I've seen Zest kind of go a little bit crazy with some of his strategies recently. I've seen him kind of uh, do crazy things like Colossus Drop as well as Disruptor Drop as well. As well. But um, looks like we are going to not be seeing too many Adepts to start things off. This is more of a light harass style. And what this allows him to do is get uh, get into the later stages of tech quite efficiently. But we do have some Ravagers here going to be kind of pushing them back for right now. The Ling's right on top, so the Shade should not complete. Zest knows that he's been found out, and he knows that he can't really get in there right now, so he's going to play it a little bit safe with these Adepts and kind of just use the Shades to help him on the retreat. Now behind this, we have Warp Prism Speed and Disruptors. The thing about Disruptors is I love watching them, but I hate playing against it. It is just one of those things where if you get two or three good shots, the game is literally over before it even begins. And you know what? DRG is probably not even going to want to wait for this to come down. He's hoping that there's not too much at home. And indeed, there's not that much force field energy as well for those Ravagers to deal with. Uh, gonna pop one without really uh, too much of a semblance, and that is gonna be a big connection there with those Biles. So DRG getting quite a bit of work done uh, behind this. He is just droning up and going for the Lair Tech, so he's not, uh, he's not all in with this but he's still going to get massive amounts of work done and kill off the third base as well. The question is, is he does he smell blood in the water here? Is he going to try and push his luck, or is he going to back out of there with what he has? And it does look like he's just going to go on, uh, go on home to defend the Disruptors. Behind this, we do have the Spire beginning as well. So this transition is really perfect for DRG. He's currently up 
in every way. Even though this is actually a pretty low econ game, all things considered. Okay, not that bad of a connection. Getting a ton of lings there. But looking out, there is a Colossus in the middle of the map with a ton of links surrounding it now, and that is a huge connection there for DRG. Uh, Zest gonna keep up the aggression a little bit, but he's just getting picked off all over the place. And with no third base to speak of, the Warpers are going down, the Disruptors are starting to get picked off as well. That is just gonna be it, DRG. <laughs> I don't even know what to make of that game. Uh, it seemed like DRG had the trouble in the last game in Zest just really hard. <laughs> just a really hard counter to what he was going for. But that does mean we go, we have at least three more games. Now, Zest has been trying to go for these aggressive builds. I think we might be seeing a macro game on this one. I don't know. I don't know for certain. I haven't seen these replays. But after a game like that, what do you essentially do? Let's find out. As spawning down here in the bottom position with a probe already out on the map, he is Zest. And his opponent. Up here in the top. Has no idea this probe is coming. He is DRG. Now I've been loving that uh, recently Zerg players have just been going straight for that third base rather than doing that kind of dance with the probe. It's just really something that you can't allow your build to be slowed down by. That kind of harassment can slow you down a lot. So just getting that third base up does mean that you're going to be a lot safer. All things considered. Now, the question is, what is DRG going to do in this game? Uh, you know, he's been, pr like, he's tried to be aggressive. And it did work out pretty well for him in game number two. But will he be able to kind of get that same amount of luck as he really did get helped out a lot by some like, questionable force field choices? So I think Zest has decided in this game he's going to be uh, doing a uh, typical if it ain't broke don't fix it style. As we do see it's going to be Stargate once again so he's kind of rotating between the Twilight opening and the Stargate opening. Uh, we did see it work really well in game number one. Uh, especially when at added in to the, to the Adept build. Now, Oxide is a bit of a bigger map as well. Uh, the base is pretty far away from your opponent. So it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit easier for DRG to defend. Um, I don't, okay, there we go. Oh my goodness. We were asking for it and Zest has delivered. Void Rays are going to be on the way.
So the Void Ray's first job is essentially going to be cleaning up the uh, Overlord spread across the map. They're going to do a really good job of that, actually. And that is going to open up the ability for this Oracle to try and slip in undetected. Uh, we do see the Spore Crawl is already going down to defend. So it's not going to get a ton done, but it's really just good in uh, its utility for the later stages of the game, especially in the mid game, once you can get those revelations going. And Zest, you absolute madman, tossing down the additional Stargates behind all of this. And getting that third base up and running nice and early as well. This is going to be a crazy game. Now, unfortunately for DRG, he is going for Roach Warren, uh, and I don't think that's really going to help him out too much. You know, Ravagers, they kind of shoot up, but only in one location and delayed. But they don't really deal with Void Rays that well, especially not three Void Rays at a time. The production of Zest is just insane right now. Not even able to get the probe. Now behind all of this, DRG does recognize that he needs to go straight up to Lair Tech. He needs to get that Spire out, just get some Corruptors or Mutalisks or just anything else. Uh, Hydralisks even can deal with this, but... Yeah, even just trying to get damage done with these little bit of run buys, he wants to get on top of the economy and kind of slow this down. He's just unable to. So really right now, Zest is just kind of powering up. Um, no upgrades I can see just yet for these Void Rays, even though he is still going pretty hard on them. Uh, we do see the transition in the gateway tech. Uh, he's got the uh, Forge for the upgrades on his ground. And the Twilight Council as well. The Queen's doing a pretty good job to try and shut down these Void Rays, but there is just way too many of them. Now with a good revelation, he's going to deny a lot of this creep. DRG, I don't think that's going to work, my man. There are two more deaths behind him. So even without the Flux Veins, these Void Rays are pretty speedy units. Uh, they're going to be able to kill off that fourth base relatively quickly. Cancel going down on that. Trying to kill off one of the void waves, but that is going to be very excellently microed back. And now we do see the Hydralis coming out, so these void waves are going to lose a bit of their utility out on the map. Uh, might get a couple of pickoffs here if uh, DRG doesn't clump up his units. But we also have Archons and Storm going to be on the way here soon. And that's where things just get really dicey for DRG. Absolutely melting the focus fired. Focus fired Hydralis there. Now it really comes down to the engagement. We do see uh, DRG having a really good concave on this position, even trying to open up uh, this location a little bit more so that he can get as much surface area on this army as possible. Um, 
with the creep as well, it's going to make it a little bit easier for him. But the Void Rays trying to get on top. They do get taken down very quickly by those queens. Now we do see a big Zealot run by as well. Going to be doing whatever they can. A Zest. Looks like DRG wants to pull the trigger here, but if Zest can hold this location, which it looks like he's actually doing a pretty good job of, with the shield battery being popped as well, he's gonna get right on top and kill off the reinforcements. And now he's even gonna fight onto Creep. Please do not overextend Zest if you wanna win this game. But it looks like he has more than enough The Void Rays pushing himself to victory, and that is going to give him a 2-1 lead. Zest is best. That was an amazing gameplay there. I think that's the first time I've actually seen Void Rays work uh, in that situation. DRG just unable to really get that unit count that he needed to... Um, Kind of propel himself forward. Yeah, suddenly I am wearing my glasses. I usually forget to wear them. But, you know what? This guy never fails to wear his glasses because I don't know if he wears them. Spawning in the bottom position of Death Aura. He is zest. And his opponent up here in the top, he is DRG. Now you'll always have to worry for DRG in this position. He is down two games to one in a best of five. One more and he's out of here. Zest, on the other hand, has got to be thinking, do I risk any sort of huge aggression? Do I try and uh, do I try something crazy or do I just do what I've been doing and try and beat him in a straight up macro game? All these questions are going through his mind right now, and DRG doing a really good job of kind of delaying the build of Zest right now. Might even go for the extractor block. Zest right on top of things. Now, DRG is going up to that third base uh, quite handily. And I think the biggest thing to look out for is when he drops that lair. Uh, every single time he's dropped it so far, it's been a pretty reactionary lair. Um, and only getting it after he's seen what his opponent's going for. But uh, I think a little bit earlier timing on that lair might help him defend just a little bit more. Uh, that's kind of just my opinion uh, based off what I've seen in this series so far. But once again, it is going to be Stargate. And this time DRG does get a nice and early scout off on it. So he does know what's, what's up and what's coming his way. Nice big explosion. The Lings weren't able to do anything about that. Now, one thing to note is that uh, DRG, he's not out on the map with any of these overlords. In fact, his vision is pretty much uh, stuck there on the creep. 
So, uh, he's a little bit blinder than in the previous games. Gonna have to rectify that a little bit as he sees the Void Ray coming across the map. Both support crawlers, an Evo chamber. And I like the move so far. He's not really, like, he's not really overdoing anything just yet. But Zest, a little bit of an overcommitment here with this Void Ray, and uh, he's going to have to back on out of there. The Oracle, likewise, getting ref uh, rejected on the third. It's like that, it's like that meme from a while ago, don't cheese me, bro. As uh, we do see, once again, it's going to be Stargate play. Just a ton of Void Rays, and once he makes that transition into the Archons, into the Charge Lots, he's going to be super safe and just able to get massive amounts of damage done. DRG really wants to slow him down, but now he does see the additional buildings. I don't know if he could click on them to confirm that they are indeed Stargate, but instantly dropping down the lair as well as a bailing nest, he might be trying to end this game as quickly as possible so that he doesn't get overwhelmed. Just void rays all over the place. It's like a, it's like one of those campaign missions where they just kind of spread Zerg units all over the place. Except this time it's void rays. Uh, Oracle just gonna revelate here. Drg gonna be opening up new attack paths just to make sure that he can get around the army of Zest, and that's kind of the thing. Now, uh, now that those Void Rays have kind of hit that mass where you can't deal with them effectively with what DRG has right now, he wants to make sure that he can rotate around and kind of just play to the fact that they don't have Flux Veins and they're not as fast as they could be. Unfortunately though, DRG kind of just donating his units right now, uh, flying, un or, uh, flying underneath them. As we do see Zest going to be going straight for the Templar Archives and the gateways behind it, as well as Charge. Nice. So now, DRG, he kind of has a little bit of a window where he can attack before that storm is complete. And I think really, he just needs to start pumping out units, cut his drone production completely, and go straight for the attack. Excuse me. Because once that storm completes, as well as that war prism, he's just going to be absolutely overmatched here. Um, he does have a small army supply lead, but that's really doesn't tell you much. Now Zest sees that this is coming. Uh, he's got his storms in position now. And quite a few storms, I might add, as well as some Archons and a huge run by with the War Prism.
but I think, yeah, DRG needs needs to go soon before Zest can get out anything else. Actually, nothing at nothing at home to defend for DRG right now. A lot of units actually just going to be forced back. His entire army is going to have to retreat. And that just means that Zest is given so much room. See the infestation pit going down. So he is going to be able to go up to Hive Tech. But the question is, is it too little too late? have to find out as DRG completely maxed out going to be going for a big engagement right now sending off a little bit of a baneling of a baneling attack to try and break the fourth base location but Zest not really giving him the time of day with this uh, just continuously sending these small uh, war prism harassments to pull the entire army back so DRG has to pull back there's no overlords. The only vision that he has um, is on creep. He doesn't even see the war prism right now. But whatever he's waiting for, he's gonna have to like he's gonna have to move soon. Some nice storms lengthening the army of DRG. He has to split on the bottom of the ramp. Uh, those hydras are pretty much the linchpin of this. And here we go, the big engagement for everything. The Bailey is getting blanketed by the storms. One of those High Templar even survives, and he still has plenty of storm energy left, and DRG is forced on the retreat, and now Zest is on the attack, completely maxed out as DRG is just now remaking those that Corruptor count. Not remaking it, but making it. Some more huge storms just going to blanket those Hydralisks and those Banelings, taking them out very quickly here. And I think DRG running a little bit on Faith right now as that the amount of carriers is just really difficult to deal with. The Corruptor is going to be popping, but they're not going to be in time. GG is called.